Hosts George and Cindy Anthony, and their stories are drastically different, especially when it came to Casey's abandoned car. It smelled like a decomposed body. I'm not sure why she would abandon the car. She's not stupid. New at 6, you'll see video of George and Cindy Anthony trying to answer questions about Kaylee and Casey. And it seemed obvious that Casey had filled her parents with so many lies that at times their stories were muddled and confused. But three things are certain. George Anthony says he knows Casey is covering up something. He's certain her abandoned car smelled like a dead body. But Cindy Anthony was ready to blame anyone but Casey. Kathy Bellich had a lot of help at Channel 9, pouring over every word of these interrogations on DVD. And Kathy, you've been on the story from the beginning, but these interviews were still eye-opening to you. They were. What we're seeing and hearing on these DVDs that were just released today is really a story of he said, she said. George and Cindy Anthony tell very different stories about how they believe the smell of death got into Casey's car trunk. Two weeks after Cindy Anthony found out her granddaughter Kaylee was missing and called deputies to arrest her daughter Casey, she was defending Casey to the FBI. She said Casey is smart enough not to leave self-incriminating evidence behind in her car trunk. Cindy said if it were her, she'd have run the car into a river or off a cliff. And I, I find it very hard to believe that Kaylee, Casey had an opportunity to put Kaylee in there for a short period of time to get the car stench that bad and take her somewhere else. But her husband George told the FBI the very next day that Casey's story makes no sense. Little threads of truth in all these little lies. She said, I know it, but we just can't get it together. FBI Special Agent Scott Boland's interview revealed something we've never heard before, what Casey told her parents during a jail visit about how the mysterious nanny kidnapped Kaylee. And yet Zanny is supposed to be the person that knocked her down and took her kid in front of witnesses, but we have no witnesses that say this happened outside of her. But George admitted that Kaylee never, ever mentioned Zanny the nanny, even though she often spoke of others she knew well. Did you even know if you asked her, how did you have a good time with Zanny today? There was never any brightness or anything like that come to her. Okay. Okay. It's like, there was no recognition on her part as far as you can tell. whatsoever, no. George told the FBI agent he has to believe that Kaylee is alive for his own sanity, but the agent told him the worst possible outcome in this case is not knowing the whole story. Reporting live, Kathy Bellich, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. If George and Cindy were watching tonight, it would be the first time they saw what the others said to investigators. We asked George Anthony today about the contradictory public comments he makes about Kaylee being alive and the private comments revealed tonight. George admitted he and his wife Cindy were not always on the same page regarding Kaylee. He wouldn't talk on camera, but he also said he keeps a journal of everything he tells investigators to try and keep the story straight. Here's what we know will happen in the next week in the case against Casey. On Tuesday, a Attorney Jose Baez will argue motions to get access to more evidence against Casey. Meanwhile, Casey continues to sit alone in the Orange County Jail. You can watch the George and Cindy interrogations on WFTV.com. And if you want to be the first to see the next major development in this case, stay with Channel 9.